I grew up twirling in front of the TV screen watching music videos of the 90s. Whether it was Missy Elliott and Sierra's One Two Step, or whether I was belting with the queen of R&B, Alicia Keys. My sisters, one and three, me, 10 years old, they had no choice. Just had to be my most captivated audience. One day, the twirling turned into fiddling of thumbs as I felt the stress and anxiety build up in our home. I knew something was going on, but I wasn't ready until my mom took me aside and she said, we have to leave. We're going somewhere else. What? <laughs> what do you mean we're going somewhere else? Where are we leaving to? I barely had time to process. All I knew was that it was a few days away. We had to leave. We had to leave our home. Now let me paint the picture. It was around the time, but September uh, 11th, 2001, marked a pivotal moment in my life as a Muslim identifying person, for my families, and for pretty much everyone who could be mistaken for Muslim, potentially Muslim, everyone and anyone. It really changed our lives. I happened to live in a city where, you know, one of the single largest terrorist attacks took place. It was Brooklyn, New York, that's where I lived. It only happened a few, uh, just across the river for us. What ended up being the ticker was that my family, we were hardworking immigrants, spent a decade of our lives in New York City, yet we were undocumented. We didn't have these papers, but we had a lot of hope and we worked really hard and we tried to live as normally as possible until that faded day where everything changed. So with that, 9-11, Post 9-11, all the surveillance measures came to play. George Bush had his big brother surveillance measure called Homeland Security, where you could go and knock on doors and demand to see some papers. However, my parents simply didn't want to risk turning up empty-handed. We didn't want to see how that played out. And so they made the hardest decision to move us away from this. There was a brief moment where after my mom told me, I was panicking. I was like, I was, I had a punch in my gut. I was wondering, what do I do with this piece of news? The only thing I insisted was, can I just make one phone call? You know that one, you know that one friend, the dial a friend, a phone call? Um, this was my person. Her name was Annie. So I picked up the call. Hi, Miss Wien. May I please speak to Annie? if she's home. Hi, Annie. I don't know how to say this, but I'm leaving, and I thought you should know. I won't be coming back to school, but I really hope you get to be valedictorian because you deserve it. You've been a really, really great friend. Can we stay in touch over AOL Messenger? <laughs> Email? <laughs> I'm really going to miss you. That's when I started to really feel it. Hot tears, big fat tears rolling down, stinging me. The only place I could find comfort was music. And so I put on Queen Alicia Keys into my ears. She has that one song that would be on repeat for me, Karma. And the way the chorus goes is, what goes around comes around. What goes up must come down. What's going around? What's coming? What's coming down? What's coming up? All I knew was that she was the only one who had the rage and confidence to feel that rage that I felt coursing through my veins, where life was handing a deck of cards to you that you simply didn't know what else to do but to take it. It felt uncontrollable, it felt unwieldy. I, thank God for Alicia. And so 
we put the tears aside, we have to get into operations mode. We have five days, I need to pack my bags. Uh, we're leaving our home, which means you need to figure out how to pack an entire apartment into the five bags that we could take. So I start playing packing Tetris. I start to think about what is the ratio of baby bottles to diapers to baby toys that we can take because of course we are traveling with toddlers. And then with me, I'm negotiating how many CDs to books to clothes. I mean, what do you even wear, like where we're going? But we get it done. And then it's the 5 a.m. wake up call. We're about to leave our home and, and say goodbye. The only person who was able to give us a send off um, was one of my favorite people. And thankfully so, she was a second mom to me, my babysitter. She was the only one who was able to give us that physical goodbye and I'm just really glad it was, it was her. So with that, we hop on a Greyhound bus, um, convoluted path between New York, Connecticut, somewhere in there was Ohio, um, and I rested my head against the, that Greyhound bus listening to Alicia, watching the flat lands of America. I had never seen America outside of New York City. Wild. This was my first time going on a road trip, but I was exiting, so not sure how that one works, but just not returning home. I had Alicia in my ears. She talked about what's going around, what's coming around. I'm looking at the expanses of this highway, wondering how do I hold on to my memories? How do I hold on to the way my friends looked, my favorite convenience store, my favorite park? It felt like the vibrancy of those details were washing away into the expanses of these highways to, to Netherland, America, like places I had never been before. And so it was a war, me against my memory, just really, really trying to hold on, not knowing where we were headed. Flash forward to the last day before we were gonna head to the border office, which would have decided another series of life turning events. We didn't know what it was gonna be yet, so it was that one, one day before. High anticipation with, our, with my family, but we were weary travelers. And at that point we paused, particularly took a pause at the Detroit waterfront um, on uh, Lake Detroit, looking out into the Windsor City skyline. I think we all needed a moment. We were tired, we had been traveling, and in that moment, as we stood next to the water, we were able to re-energize ourselves, take a pause, take in the beauty around us. So it felt like seeing the sun fall onto the Detroit and Windsor skyline Painting a canvas of pinks and purples was beautiful. And we were in a tranquil silence, probably for the first time in this chaotic series of events. <sighs> but I had to break the silence, because <laughs> you know I'm 10. Um, and I look at my mom, and I ask her in Bangla, Amu, which means mom, Amar kotai jai, which means where are we going? And as we're looking out into this, this skyline of people that exist, a, a visual of something we can hold on to, an idea of what home could maybe look like, she looked at me and she said, Deki, okane, which means, let's see, over there. Not many words, a few words, but enough that I felt myself exhaling with the ripples of the water. What is it about water? It just makes you feel like you can store your emotions somewhere. And that's what it did. I put on Alicia in one ear, but the other ear, I left it open so that I could listen to the water against the shorelines, lapping away, creating a beautiful harmony of its own. And I mixed that in with Alicia and this time Alicia said, what goes around comes around, what goes up must come down. 
this entire time, I had felt that it was this dagger, karma. It was coming around. I had no idea where it was going to go. But this was the first time that I felt whatever was coming around, whatever was going around, I can take it. Thanks. Cause what go? 